Hello Luke, welcome to lesson 29. So today we're going to be talking about exponents. Exponents, exponents, and more exponents. Alright, and so maybe to begin with, uh, let's just really quickly um, back up and talk about what an exponent is. You should already know this, uh, you've seen this in many lessons before, but you recall that the exponent is just a small little number sitting above a variable, or it could be above a number as well, either way. It's just this, uh, yeah, again, this small number that's uh, raised above the letter or variable. And recall what this exponent means. It means that we take the number or the variable that's being raised to that exponent and we multiply it by itself that many times. So x squared means x times x, right? 3 squared means 3 times 3, right? Uh, w to the fifth means w times itself five times, right? So that's what an exponent is. It's this, this number up at the top here. And it's, it's uh, indicating how many times you're going to multiply that base by itself. All right, so that is what an exponent is, and that should be just a really quick review. But let's now talk about maybe some questions that you might have in regard to an exponent. If you really stopped and think about it, uh, you might have thought, well, okay, if I have an exponent such as x squared, right, you might ask, um, it seems like we're always using positive exponents, positive numbers. What would happen if I had a negative exponent? You know, what if I had an x to a negative 1 or an x to a negative 4? What does that mean? Does it mean anything? Can I do that? All right. Or even maybe another thought, what about x to the 0? Does that mean anything? All right. So these are all questions that uh, many people have had when we start talking about exponents. Can we use some of these other things, these negatives, and can we use a zero? Does it actually mean anything? Well, I'll tell you right up front that actually they do mean something, but let's talk about what they mean here in a different way. Let's, let's just assume that you know um, that, I, that a negative exponent does in fact indicate something, and you're trying to figure out what it indicates. So let's talk about first taking something like this, x to the negative 2 uh, times an x to the uh, positive 4, all right? Now if I were to give you this problem, you may not know what x to the negative 2 actually means, all right? Uh, but if I were to say this is being multiplied by an x to the 4th, could you give me an answer based on what you already know about exponents? And if you think about that, you should be able to, because we've already talked about how to multiply variables with exponents. Recall what we do is we add the exponents, right? So this becomes an x raised to the sum of these exponents. So it's going to be raised to the negative 2 plus a 4. That's just standard procedure. That's what we've already learned, right? So now we need to combine those two, and we can do that with a negative number. There, that presents no problem to us. x to the negative 2 plus 4, well, that's just x squared, right? Negative 2 plus 4 is x squared. So there's our solution to this problem. And it really doesn't, this negative really doesn't pose an issue. It's, it's pretty straightforward. We're just adding these exponents. But if we think back to this now, and we go, well, how did this work? All right, let's think about what this meant. So this x to the fourth, what does that mean? Well, it means x times x times x times x, right? Four x's being multiplied by each other. This x to the negative two, well, what does that mean? And that's where we're gonna have a little bit of trouble, perhaps. What does x to the negative two actually mean? I've already told you that it does mean something, so you can take that on faith right now, but if you were to try to discern what it actually does mean, you may come into um, a little bit of a brick wall. What does it mean? It may mean um, x to the negative 2. I don't know, maybe one option that you might think of might be, well, maybe it means something like a negative x, you know, times a negative x. I mean, maybe, maybe that's what it means, two negatives 
uh, being multiplied by each other. But if we think of it that way, does that work? Because let's, let's work it out. A negative x times a negative x, well that's going to give us a positive x, right? Negative x times negative x, it's going to give us a positive x squared. We're going to add the exponents, right? We have a negative times a negative, that's going to be a positive, so we end up with x squared, right? And if then we continue multiplying that by the rest of these x's that we have over here, x, 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 and we're multiplying that out, well now we have to add all these exponents up, so we have x to the second plus one plus another one plus another one plus another one, we end up with x to the sixth, right? Because we have one, 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 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is going to be 6. x to the 6 would be our answer. And we know that that's not accurate with what we've already discovered over here. Um, this we used a known process that we know works. We just have to add exponents uh, to multiply. And we got x squared. So these don't match up. So that can't be what x to the negative 2 actually represents. It can't mean that it represents some sort of a, a negative x right? Um, just doesn't work that way. So the question then becomes what does that x to the negative 2 represent? Okay, so maybe maybe you've already decided that you know if you're really astute. Otherwise I'm gonna tell you. So what does that x to the negative 2 mean actually? Well it means 1 over x squared. That's what x to the negative 2 means. All right. So when we talk about negative exponents, we're actually taking the reciprocal of this fraction, 1 over x squared. Uh, the reciprocal would be x to the negative 2 if we write it as an exponent. All right. That's what x to the negative 2 means, 1 over x squared. Notice the difference in sign. This is x to the negative 2. What it, it, it means 1 over x to the positive 2. This one on the right, this, this would make sense to us. Every part of this we would understand. We know what a 1 is, we know what an x squared is, and we know what an x squared represents. It represents 1 x times x, right? Um, this x to the negative 2, I am now telling you that that actually represents a fraction. It rec represents 1 over x squared. These two are exactly the same. All right. That is what a negative exponent does for you. All right. So maybe another example might be, you know, uh, x to the negative four. Well, what is that? What does that represent? Well, the answer is it represents one over x to the fourth. Okay. Now let's really get complicated. What happens if I have something that looks like this? What happens if I have, you know, one over x to the negative two? All right, I have a negative exponent in the denominator of a fraction. Well, what that would represent, it would represent 1 over, and then this x to the negative 2 is actually representative of 1 over x squared, like we said earlier. Okay, so we end up with this 1 over 1 over x, over x squared, which, you know, we can do this in our heads, but if I, if I actually multiply this out, well, actually, I'll back this up, it's going to be 1, you know, divided by... 1 over x squared, right? 1 divided by 1 over x squared. And if I, if I know that, then I could write that as 1 times the reciprocal x squared over 1, right? And if I multiply this out, I actually end up with x squared. Okay, so 1 over x to the negative 2 is actually equivalent to x squared squared. Isn't that interesting? 1 over x to the negative 2 is equivalent to x squared. Okay, so maybe before we go any further, let's just uh, show how this actually does make sense. All right, so let's go back to our problem over here. <clears throat> if we think of x over x to the negative 2 as being 1 over x squared, does that in fact work out? Does that actually give us this answer that we would expect it to give? And let's, well, let's find out. So x to the negative 2, we said would be equal to 1 over x squared. And we're multiplying this by x to the fourth. And maybe I'll just write that 
as x to the fourth over one. So we have this kind of a fraction there. Now we think about cross canceling here, right? And to think about cross canceling, we, we, again, we have to kind of think about what these mean. This means x times x, right? This means x times x times x four times, all right? Well, now I could say, well, this x can go into itself once, and it goes into this one once. This x can go into itself once and go into this one once. So in a sense, we're cross-canceling uh, out two x's here. We're losing the two x's, and we're left with just two x's left over, right? So 1 over x squared times x, fourth, x to the fourth over 1 is going to equal, on top now I have only x squared left over, over, on the bottom I only have 1. That's going to give me x squared, which is in fact what we were assuming it should probably equal based upon what we know about adding exponents when we're multiplying variables. All right? Does that make sense? And maybe I'll just, let's just take this part right here. I, I, I'm worried this part might throw you off. So let's just clarify that part right there. I'm going to pull this over here and just go over that a little bit closer. So 1 over x squared times x to the fourth over 1. When we have problems like this, where we have the same variable in the denominator as in the numerator over here, and we're doing the classic cross-canceling here, uh, what we can do is we can just imagine this is 2x's, this is 4x's, the two x's are going to eliminate two of these four x's, okay? So what's four minus the two that we're eliminating? That leaves us with two. So this becomes x squared, okay? Think of it that way. And this is just going to become a one because we used both of these um, to eliminate two of these x's up here. And that would give us x squared left over, all right? Uh, hopefully you, you see that, that that's clear. When you're cross-canceling these variables, you just uh, subtract the number of x's down here from the number of x's that we have up here. And what's left over is then what you have in the numerator now. All right. Does that make sense? So hopefully that's clear. But bottom line is we can see that if x to the negative 2 did equal 1 over x squared, this would actually make sense to us. We would actually get to an answer that we would have presumed would have been the correct answer based on what we already know about adding our exponents. Okay, does that make sense? So let's, let's just try a couple problems here, and, and hopefully this will kind of ring true to you as we do them. If I have something like x to the fifth times x to the second times x to the negative three, all right, what would the solution or the, um, the uh, value of this be? What would be the simplification of this? Well, let's, let's add them up. So x to the fifth, x to the second is going to be x to the seventh, right? We're adding exponents. And x to the seven minus three. So seven minus three is four. So it's going to be x to the fourth, right? Does that make sense? All right. Now, let's, let's try um, just a couple of exercises here. If and this goes back to what I talked about before, when we have a 1 over x to the negative 2 again, bringing that one back up. Remember before, uh, we just showed that 1 over x to the negative 2. If we work that out, we end up getting x squared. All right, And this leads to a really nice shortcut, because what that means, if this indeed is x squared, what that means is to get rid of a negative sign in the exponent, all we need to do is move that term into the op onto the opposite side of this fraction bar, this dividing bar. All right. So think of it in terms of if I take this x to the negative 2 and I move it up here, I can do that. But when I do that, the sign of the exponent changes. So if I want to bring this x to the negative 2 up, it becomes x squared over 1, which is just x squared. All right, so let's just uh, practice a few of those. If I've got um, 
uh, let's say, 1 over y to the negative 3. And I told you to rewrite this, eliminating negative exponents be pretty easy. All I need to do is move this y to the negative 3 up into the numerator. And when I do that, the sign of the exponent will change. So if I move him up into the numerator, I now have y to the third, the sign changes, over, well, there's nothing left in the denominator, so it's just over 1, which of course is just equal to y to the third. Okay, let's try another one. What if I've got, let's do a little bit different, let's go z to the negative 4 over, um, well, let's just go 3. Okay, what would I do in this case if I wanted to get rid of the negative exponents? Well, the answer would be I want to move this z to the negative fourth to the opposite side of this fraction bar, that thereby changing the sign to a positive. So if I move him into the denominator, well, then I have nothing left in the numerator, so I just have a 1. There's that invisible 1 there. Don't put a 0. There is that invisible 1. All right. Um, so we have a 1 in our numerator. And then I moved that z to the negative 4 to the denominator. So now I have a z to a positive 4 in the denominator. This 3 is still down there. So I need to still multiply that 3 by that z to the 4th. Okay. And this is important to recognize that this is multiplication. You're not adding the 3 to the z to the 4th. You're always going to be multiplying. Okay. Always multiply. When you move something between you know, on either side of that fraction sign, you're going to be multiplying that by the rest of the denominator. Okay? All right, let's try another one. What about if I've got something that looks like this? What if it's um, um, z to the negative 5 over x to the negative 2? And I told you to rewrite this, eliminating your negative exponents. Go ahead and take a moment and try to come up with a solution for this. All right, so how would we do this? Same process we've been using before. This z to the negative fifth, we want to get rid of that negative sign. We're going to move it into the denominator. So let's put our fraction bar. We're moving this z to the negative fifth into the denominator, and that's going to change it to z to the fifth. Okay. And then I take this x to the negative 2 that was in the denominator, and I want to move him to the numerator. So that again, I, I get rid of the negative sign. So it's going to become x to the positive 2. And there we go. We have eliminated our negative exponents. It's as simple as that. All right. So hopefully that is making sense. Um, let's talk about another interesting aspect of this. Well, what happens if I have x to the negative 3 times x to the positive 3? This is an interesting scenario. What happens here? Well, if I have x to the negative 3 times x to the positive 3, what am I going to do? I'm going to add exponents, right? We knew that. x to the uh, negative 3 times x to the 3 is x time, or raised to the negative 3 plus a 3 well, negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Okay, so x to the 0. Well, what in the world is x to the 0? Again, what would that mean, right? Um, we know, again, that x squared is equal to x times x. We know that x to the third is equal to x times x times x. We now know that x to the negative 2 is equal to 1 over x squared, right? So what in the world does x to the 0 represent? Is it zero? Is that what it is? Well, let's take a look at that and see if we can make some sense out of it. If we look at this this expression here, x to the negative 3 times x to the 3, we know if I wanted to eliminate the negative exponents that x to the negative 3 is in fact the equivalent of x to the or 1 over x to the 3. Right? That's what we've been talking about in all of these other examples. We just move it down into the denominator, because right now it's, it's technically in the numerator, right? It's kind of over 1. So we can move it down into the denominator and it becomes 1 over x to the third times x to the third. 
Now that's an interesting scenario because we can actually set this as a fraction and we can say, oh, looky here, we have an x to the third and an x to the third. They can cross cancel each other out, right? They cross each other out. And then we can multiply and get one over one, which is actually equal to one, right? So, based on that, x to the negative three times x to the three should turn out to be a one. Now, we actually had it turn out to be x to the zero. So, math mathematics, uh, mathematicians have decided that it makes the most sense to say that x to the zero is equivalent to one. That's what x to the zero is equivalent to, which makes sense because again, that is what we would have gotten here if we would have broken this down and first eliminated the negative uh, exponents. Okay, so x to the zero is in fact equal to one. And in fact, anything raised to the zero power will be one. It's kind of cool. All right, so if you have a z, maybe I'll just go back to my black here. If you have a z to the zero, well, that's going to be equal to a one. If you have a w to a zero, that's going to be equal to a one. If you have a smiley face raised to the zero, that is going to be equal to one. If you have a five raised to the zero, that is going to be equal to one. If you have a 1000 raised to the zero, that is going to be equal to one. Anything raised to the zero power is equal to one without exception. Okay. All right. Does that does that uh, make sense to you? I hope it does. Um, but that's really all there is to it in regard to this lesson. So let's let's just try a couple of problems here and see how you do. Kind of uh, <clears throat> experimenting with what we've learned here. All right. Let's see if I can find some some good problems here. All right, let's just, uh, I'm just going to pull out a couple from uh, the, the textbook here. Um, I know I'm just being lazy. That way I don't have to think of them up as I go. But let's do, um, let's see, x squared, y to the fifth, y to the negative 2, x to the negative 2. What if I told you to simplify this expression? What would you do? Well, we'll do this one together. And then the next one I'm going to have you do first by yourself. So we're looking for like variables, right? Because this is this is all multiplication, and we can multiply things if they are uh, the same variable, right? So we have an x here, we have an x here. So we can multiply those two x's by each other by remember what's the rule? Adding the exponents, right? Adding the exponents. So x squared times x to the negative 2 is going to be 2 plus a negative 2. Well, that's going to be an x to the 0, right? 2 plus negative 2. And then if we go to the next uh, variable here, it's a y. We have another y here. We can multiply those two by each other. So y to the fifth times y to the negative 2, we add the exponents. What's 5 plus a negative 2? Well, that's going to be a 3. So it's going to be y to the third. All right. Now we've run out of variables that we can multiply by each other, but we can say that x to the zero is equivalent to one, right? That's what we said earlier. Anything raised to the zero power is equivalent to one. So this is actually equivalent to one times y to the third, which of course is just y to the third, right? So our answer in this case is y to the third. It's kind of cool. The x's were eliminated. Is that cool or is that cool? All right, the x's were eliminated and we're left with just one variable now, which is the y. Okay, all right, excellent. Let's try, let's try another one here. How about, let's really go wild here. Let's, let's try a nice complicated one here. Let's go with x to the fifth times y to the zero z to the negative 3z. Four. Oh, 
Okay, so here the directions would probably tell you to expand this problem. And remember, expand would indicate that we're using our distributive property rule, right? We're distributing this factor through the set of parentheses, okay? So whenever they tell you to do things like this, the first thing is really to go through it and just try to simplify what you can simplify. Before you start multiplying things through and expanding the whole thing, let's just simplify it a little bit first, anything that we can do already, okay? So just kind of reading through this, we might recognize right away that we have a couple of exponents raised to the zero. We have a y to the zero, we have a z to the zero. Let's, let's go through and, and just remember that those are equal to a one, all right? So for example, this first y to the zero, well that's equal to a one, which means that one times x to the fifth times z and times everything in this parenthesis, that's not gonna change anything. So that y to the zero is just basically going to eliminate itself because it's going to be a 1 times, I'm just writing it out in front, y to the 0 is a 1 times x to the 5th times a z times whatever all this other stuff is, right? Um, I'm just pulling this down. So you can see where this 1 times x to the 5th z, that's not going to change anything. 1 times x to the 5th to the z is still x to the 5th z, right? So essentially, I can just drop him out and eliminate him that way. Okay, so we have x to the fifth z, and then we have our parentheses. Now we have a p to the negative three times a z to the zero, which again is just a one. So a p to the negative three times a one is still just a p to the negative three, right? So we can just eliminate that z to the zero and continue with our minus four x to the negative fifth z to the negative one. Boom. We've simplified it. We've eliminated a couple of variables here. The the, um, the z to the zero and the y to the zero, they're both gone. So that's, that's handy. We've kind of made the, the problem just that much simpler. All right, now we can go ahead and distribute through. We can multiply through. So if we take this x to the fifth z times it by our first term here, we would end up with, well, if we put it in alphabetical order, we're gonna have a p to the negative three times x to the fifth times a z, right? Now we can take our factor again outside the parentheses and multiply it by our second term right here. And this is gonna be a positive. So we have a positive times a negative. Well, that's going to give me a negative. We know that much. Now we can multiply it out. We have x to the fifth times everything in here. Well, we might recognize right away that x to the fifth times this term is going to combine the x's. So the x to the fifth is going to combine with x to the negative fifth. All right, so we're going to add those exponents for the x's. And if we add the exponents, we have five plus a negative five, which is a zero. So it's actually an x to the zero. Now, they, this, this term doesn't have any coefficient, and it's good to write coefficients first. This one does. We'll just drop him down because he's not going to be multiplied by any coefficient other than one out here. So then x to the fifth times x to the negative fifth, we already said, is x to the zero, right? And then we have a z. Well, this z is going to be multiplied by this z. And we have a z to the one, that invisible one. So we add the exponents. One minus one is zero. So that's also z to the zero, OK? Now we can go ahead and look through this and say, is there any other simplifying that we can do? This first term, well, no, there's nothing that we can do there. There's no com combining of any of those variables. We're stuck, all right? The second term, though, we could immediately recognize that this x to the 0, that's just a 1, and the z to the 0, that's just a 1. So 4 times 1 times 1 is still going to be 4. So we end up with just the 4. And this would be our expansion to this original expression. All right, do you see how we did that? All right, then we're going to have you do one on your own here and see how you do. Let's do x to the negative 2 times y to the negative 2. Um, and then we'll go times x squared y squared minus, well, we'll give you a plus, plus 
x to the fourth y squared. And this, this is an x, pardon my writing here. Okay, so uh, go ahead, pause the video, and give this one a try. All right, so let's see how you did. So we're going to multiply this through. We might first look through it and just see, is there anything we could do within the expression itself? Well, this x to the negative 2, y to the negative 2, no, there's really nothing there. x squared, y squared, this term, there's nothing we can combine there. 4x to the 4th, y to the 2nd, no, there's nothing we can combine there either. So we're good to start distributing through. So we distribute this whole term through. <coughs> x to the negative 2, well, that's going to be multiplied by this x to the 2. We add the exponents, that's going to give us x to the 0. y to the negative 2 times y to the positive 2, well that's again going to give us y to the 0. Then we have a, a plus being multiplied by the plus, so we have a plus. Then we have an x, well we have this coefficient, this 4, we don't have anything out here other than a 1, so that 4 is going to remain. Then we have an x to the negative 2, which is going to combine with this x to the 4. And again, I'm, I'm now distributing through to the second expression here. x to the negative 4, uh, x to the negative 2 times the x to the, uh, the positive 4. That's going to give me x squared. y to the negative 2 times y to the 2. Well, that's going to be a y to the 0, right? Now I can go through and just simplify this. This is equivalent to a 1 times a 1. Uh, plus a 4 times an x squared times a 1, right? This 1 times 1, of course, it's just going to give me 1, but I can't just drop it because that's actually being added to this next term. So be careful. Don't just right away think, oh, I can drop these two and be done with them. Well, no, you really can't in this case because they're not being multiplied by this next term. They're being added by it. If they were being multiplied by the 4x squared y to the 0, Yes, we could essentially drop them because 1 times this 4x squared y to the 0 would just be 4x squared y to the 0. But here we're actually adding it to there. So we, we can't just drop it. It's 1 plus 4x squared. Now here we have y to the 0, which of course we just said was 1. We can multiply that, and that's going to give us a 4x squared. So our final uh, solution here, our answer, is going to be 1 plus 4 x squared. All right. Does that make sense? I hope so. All right. Um, let's see. Maybe just to make sure that you've got this part of it, let's just do one fraction problem before we stop here. Um, what if I have 1 over negative 3 raised to the negative 2? Try that on your own. Simplify it. All right. So, hopefully that wasn't too bad. Here, the key is recognizing that we want to get rid of this negative exponent. So to do that, we're going to bring this, this, this bottom parentheses, actually, because the exponent is for the parentheses. We're going to bring that whole parentheses up to the top, up to the numerator. So we end up with a negative 3 raised to, not a negative 2 now, but a positive 2, because we've moved it into the numerator. And that's going to be over 1, if you want. We're just, you know, moving this up here, okay? But that that over 1, you can recognize that actually it's just the negative 3 squared, right? Over 1. So now we can multiply this out. A negative 3 squared is going to give us a positive 9. So that would be our solution, right? Excellent. All right, so hopefully that made sense. Um, negative exponents are not very complicated. It's just a matter of recognizing that they um, can be written as fractions, by, and, the, and that negative can be switched to a positive by simply moving it to the other side of the fraction. And once you have it that far, there's really nothing too new. We're just adding exponents for like variables and, and so on and so forth. So go ahead and try the homework on this, and um, I will see you tomorrow.